pleasure to be here with you and to have the opportunity to show this uh, news in the area of cardiovascular imaging fusion. Well, what is cardiovascular imaging fusion? It pretends to be the merge of the results of various cardiovascular imaging modalities into a single hybrid display. In our case, uh, these various cardiovascular imaging modalities are particularly coronary CT and 3D wall motion tracking uh, 3D echo. It combines uh, the morphology of uh, echocardiography, uh, uh, sorry, the morphology of CT and the function provided by 3D spectral tracking echo. And uh, it pretends to add a clinical value to the individual or separate uh, interpretation of both uh, tests. Uh, we do it uh, in combination with the 3D world motion tracking uh, uh, software and the vital vital software for CT. So we are merging a coronary CT and the 3D world motion tracking study performed by Toshiba Artida system, which uh, you know is uh, a system with, uh, which uh, easily acquires a complete study uh, within uh, a single cardiac cycle from the apical view. So on the left, we have uh, the typical displays of coronary CT with NPR images, uh, 3D images, etc. And on the right, we have the wall motion tracking uh, image uh, from Toshiba Artida. We have the Vital Workstation, which uh, automatically provides uh, the most uh, useful and the most typical uh, kinds of display for current university. It performs an automated coronary detection of uh, the main arteries, and also we can edit uh, the arteries at branches or remove all the things uh, we don't uh, want to appear on the final study. All these files, the, the ultrasound data set, and on the other hand, the CT data set, go uh, into a web-based hybrid viewer, which is uh, very sim simple to use. You have uh, only to drag and drop that ultrasound da data set and that CT data set onto the center of the screen. And, and then the system starts uh, to do some background activities mainly the automated axis detection uh, to have a perfect match between the left ventricle axis on CT and the left ventricle axis on ultrasound. Uh, the way that uh, the system performs this is uh, by taking into account uh, several regions of interest, several markers, uh, like the, uh, uh, the inferior septum corner and uh, it works uh, really well. This is a representation of uh, how the system uh, first uh, locates the left ventricle on the right side, and, uh, and then starts to, uh, to do an automatic coronary detection to, uh, to put their arteries on the, on the right uh, place of uh, the left ventricle. All this is uh, completely automatic, and it's performed within seconds. But in, in some cases, uh, you may need, uh, you may want to have the opportunity to uh, perform also manual axis adjustment. This is possible. You can uh, move the axis the, uh, on the images of ultrasound on CT, uh, but uh, it's really not necessary in most cases. And this uh, hybrid uh, image in viewer has uh, some different areas which can be enhanced. Uh, this is the basic view. On the left, you have uh, this clips area where you can uh, drag and drop uh, the clips uh, from ultrasound and from CT. And then you have the hybrid view area. Uh, you have there are representation of the coronary tree with the wall motion tracking left ventricle. Uh, you have the typical uh, 3D wall motion tracking colors, uh, 
you know that uh, yellow color indicate normal contractility and darker uh, blue colors indicate uh, low strain or low contractility. You have below the polar view, which is comprised by the 17 uh, segments, uh, micro segments with uh, strain numbers on it. And you have the coronary trees superimposed on these segments in order to correlate the findings on, of the strain uh, with the branches of the arterial coronaries uh, over it. Uh, on the right of this uh, polar view, you can see the strain curves. You have uh, 17 strain curves for every, every uh, uh, myocardial segment. And then you have uh, all these uh, different uh, planes, these different views, combining the CT and the ultrasound. And you have uh, a slide, uh, a slide uh, marker, which uh, you can move uh, to the right or to the left to see more of the echo or more of the CT. Also, we have a new feature in the latest version of this software, which is the stenosis view. Now we can work directly with the MPR images. Uh, we can rotate them. We can uh, check the presence of stenosis or stents or region of interest. And we can put color markers uh, on this region of interest. And these color markers will appear also on the 3D view and on the power map. This is the result of the 3D hybrid view with the coronary tree and the moving left ventricle where we can also save all these kind of videos and images where, or we can rotate the image as we want. And also we can have a simultaneous view of this uh, 3D display with the polar map. And this, is, uh, this polar map is very useful for uh, matching the, the findings. Uh, in this case, we have a low contractility region uh, on the apex that it's clearly related with that left anterior descending artery. The left ventricle display must be, uh, or can be displayed with, uh, with many, many possible ways. This is the wires or the vectors uh, type of display, which can be also useful for checking the contractility. And also we have the 3D mesh view and the Danat view, like in 3D wall motion tracking and so on. This is another sample of uh, putting uh, color markers uh, on the coronary arteries uh, in order to have them also on the 3D view and on the polar map. Also, there's a new exciting feature. Uh, we already knew the uh, 16 or 17 segments uh, uh, polar map, but uh, we now have also this uh, special polar map on the right, which pertains to, to have the three uh, anatomical regions uh, corresponding with the three main coronary arteries. Depending on the shape and on the size of the arteries, we, we have uh, different anatomic uh, regions that are different between patients. This could be very useful in, in patients with uh, some variance and some difference uh, on the branches or on the size of the arteries. So uh, we have uh, this whole view of uh, all these uh, characteristics. And on this example, we again can assess a, a contractility defect on LED territory on a patient with a bypass graft. You can also, be, if you look to the center of the image, you can also see the curves for their strain corresponding to every coronary territory. This is, is very promising, especially for stress testing. Imagine that you are performing a stress testing uh, and uh, you can watch uh, clearly and numerically 
uh, how much strain is uh, getting lower in one territory, coronary uh, territory, sorry. So this is uh, another kind of display, uh, the Dunlap view, which uh, that new polar map with the uh, three coronary territories. And also, it's interesting that we can compare uh, two studies performed with this system. And this, uh, this can be interesting for uh, watching the evolution of one patient, but it, it's especially interesting for performing stress echo uh, hybrid views. The coronary to CT data set is the same, but we have two separate data sets. One is uh, from a REST study. You can see on the left the normal uh, colors, normal contractility of the left ventricle, and on the right, you have the peak stress echo with that uh, hypokinesia on the anterolateral wall, and we can relate uh, it uh, with the findings on the CT. So this is a comparison view and that is possible all, uh, also with this software, and it's uh, very easy to see the difference between both studies. And now I'm going to show you some uh, real cases from our laboratory. Uh, this is a patient uh, with um, LED stenosis uh, with not so clear symptoms or stress testing uh, evidence, but uh, on echocardiography there was a hypokinesia on the, uh, on the apical segments, and the hybrid view is really useful to relate this, uh, this apical segment with the, with the place of the coronary stenosis especially on, on power map and on the moving 3D left ventricle. On the other hand, some uh, apical or lateral and apical uh, defects are not related with LED, but uh, can be related with some branches like diagonal branch. In this case, a patient with a diagonal branch occlusion has uh, that perfect match with the low contractility segments especially on, on poor arm view. And this is a lateral infarct. You know that lateral infarct may be related with uh, diagonal arteries, uh, intermediate ramus, uh, marginal branch, circumflex artery. And this view is very helpful, helpful for, for seeing the relationship with this circumflex and this lateral infarct. And as we have seen before, it's especially exciting that uh, we can uh, also perform stress testing. This is a case a report we published some months ago. Uh, on the A and B images, you can see the, the REST study with uh, perfect contractility at all levels. Uh, this uh, was a, a patient with a three vessel disease, but there, there, are, there were doubts. Uh, of which of the arteries was the responsible of uh, his symptoms. On stress testing, there was a large area, area of, uh, of hypokinesia on uh, the butamine stress echocardiography. And the hybrid view is the perfect view for assessing that that long uh, uh, LAD uh, is, uh, is the responsible of, uh, of that uh, symptoms and, and of that positive stress testing. This patient underwent a later stent on LED and uh, symptoms disappeared. Uh, and uh, that's also for now. We, all, we also have the opportunity of seeing this in more depth in the, in the hands-on hands -on, uh, tutorial session, which I think is uh, half past three this uh, afternoon.